So now students know what they're doing, they know the learning goals. Um, they're about to read Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, mm -hmm. which is a 18th century text, mm -hmm. speech, um, written during the Puritan period, uh, colonial time of America. What strategies and scaffolding did you use to help them comprehend this complex text? Um, looking at uh, the Common Core and, you know, it, kind of its philosophies then, choosing centers was a, an easy fit because I could spend several days on it to then make sure that I could get the depth that I needed and get the most out of the colonial time period, uh, you know, primarily from this text without having to then pull in several, several others when this one can achieve a lot of the same purposes. So the first thing I had the students do was just to read it in its entirety one time. Um, just to read through, then kind of try to, you know, figure out the language, grapple with it, the syntax that you've kind of mentioned. And what I provide them is what I call an, an active reading annotation. I'm just told it. And again, you'll find this in the Prezi as well as on georgiastandards.org. Um, and what my students do, they have, they have four options as they read. Um, I really try to get them to be very active readers and not very passive, so some kind of writing involved as they uh, read. So they can develop a question as their first choice. Maybe they're reading something that they don't understand, so they can then you know, annotate it on their paper. Or it can also be a question about something that they think is worthy of discussion that they have some special insight about. A second option is to write down an important phrase or sentence or statement that they find to be a very you know, valid argument or point the author is making. The third is to relate their reading back to some, some other text that they've read, some other experience. You know, now that we're into Romanticism, students are relating the time periods, you know, comparing and contrasting them. And then lastly is to write a concise summary in their, in their own words. So as we first start, I'll model this with the students over, a, you know, a very brief portion, you know, maybe a paragraph, where they have to do one of each. But then the student center then leading and dictating the discussion that we're having instead of my pre, you know, pre-organized and generated questions. They're asking the questions that they need clarity on. They're taking us to the key statements. They're summarizing and relating it, and so after I can make sure that they're doing it effectively, they're unleashed to do it over the whole thing, and then they really then guide that in-depth discussion. I think that's critical couple things. Mm -hmm. You are teaching them how to take notes on what they read. Right. And by take notes, you're teaching them a way to hold their thinking. Mm -hmm. So as they're reading, if they have a question, you're teaching them how to write down their question, mm -hmm. how to write down their statement. Uh, a statement that they think is interesting, which yeah. is just copying from the text. Mm -hmm. If they relate to it, and they have a thought, of, oh, I relate to this, to write that right. down, and to also summarize. Mm -hmm. You model it yes. with uh, the first or so paragraph of Sinners in the Hands mm -hmm. of an Angry God. Yes. Okay, and another, some people I've also seen will model it with a simple text. Right. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe something that we already read, and we already mm -hmm. finished, or maybe even a children's book. Yeah. You ever did anything like that? Um, I have before last year, but um, tried it just with centers because of one, it's complexity. Yeah. And I really wanted to kind of get a gauge then, instead of just modeling it over you know, a different text and then giving them a fresh one, how much would they really need me once, you know, if, when they can put this on their own? So that kind of gave me that, that insight that I, could, that I needed to see, you know, is this going to be too challenging for them? Um, are they struggling here from the very start? So that could have been good. So as you're system. modeling, you're also yeah. checking for understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, the only reason some people would use a separate text is because sinners is so difficult. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you're teaching, don't want to teach two things at the same time. Yeah. So if I'm just teaching the annotation, mm -hmm. I might separate it, and then I want to focus on the text. Yeah. Um, so that was their first read. And one of the yeah. things we know about close reading, critical aspect of it is multiple readings. Mm -hmm. You are approaching the same text, which doesn't have to be a long text, right. over and over again from different angles and different levels of um, depth of analysis. So after they've read it the first time, what do you do next to help them sort of go another step deeper mm -hmm. in terms of understanding and analyzing the text? Well, they've, they've collected all of their annotation um, from their reading, and then I give them, um, this next one is um, a soapstone strategy, you know, not reinventing the wheel here, but what I have them do is to, now that they've read the entire text and they've, you know, annotated their understandings or lack thereof, um, they complete this analysis where they kind of then show me what they really know about the speaker, as you know, the S on here, the occasion, what prompted the writing of this speech prior, you know, to Jonathan Edwards writing and delivering it. Can they kind of get that assessment from, you know, actively reading it on their own? 
you know, the audience that we've talked about. Who all is he talking to? Um, and then what is his then purpose for both? And then the tones and the various diction that he uses to achieve, you know, shifts in tone throughout his sermon. So I'll get them to do this holistic kind of, um, ana- you know, analysis of the text then to guide a very student-led discussion over the entire text. How much of that is done individually or in groups? Um, I always have them read it the first time through on their own. Um, you know, whether struggling or proficient, just for me to kind of get to see, because what I've learned, you know, early on is that where I may, you know, you know, envision students to have struggles that they actually get, or they struggle in different areas. So if I just let them do it one time on their own, um, straight through, I can get a, a very clear assessment then of can they, should they achieve this on their own? Should I partner them up? You know, who individually is struggling? So that then kind of dictates where I go from there. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's all, they're doing all their notes on their own sheet of paper. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And again, Toastone, I think, serves that same purpose mm-hmm. of holding your thinking, yeah. making your thinking visible, but now you're focusing what you want them to think about. Yeah. Before mm-hmm. it was more of just anything, any question anything you, have. you have. Now it's specifically look at the speaker, specifically mm-hmm. look at the audience, yeah. look at the purpose. What's the subject? What's the tone? Yeah, they get that whole picture then, so then in the next several steps we can, we have the whole picture and understand it and we've answered our questions, so then we can go layer by layer. It seems like you've focused on comprehension, Mm -hmm. um, and now your next step is to sort of go into more analysis and more of the closer reading. So in our next uh, segment, we're going to look at how he gets students to really dig into more minute detail of how the author uses language.